Good evening and welcome to the English Poetry Meet 3. I'm live on Neelam Saxena's page. He is a link between this and the coming world. He is a pure spring from all thirsty souls may drink. He is a tree watered by the river of beauty. He is a nightingale, an angel, a brilliant lamp. A fitting tribute to a poet by Khalil Gibran. And today, we are lucky to have both a seasoned poet and upcoming poets who will recite their creative compositions. It is an honor and pleasure to have you all on this wonderful meet. Now, let me tell you something about this meet. There will be two rounds of poetry. The theme is opened. Now, please join me in welcoming our first poet and writer, our own dear Neelam Saxena. Hi. Hi, Neelam. How are you? I'm wonderful. Yes. Nice to see you. Well, she doesn't need an introduction. But still, let me do the formalities of introducing her. Neelam Saxena Chandra is a prolific writer and a poet. She has authored five novels, one novella, and six short story collections. 32 poetry collections and 14 children's books. She is a bilingual author writing in English as well as in Hindi. More than 1500 of her poems, stories have been published in various journals, anthologies and magazines. She holds a record with the Limca Book of Records 2015 for being the author having the highest number of publications in a year in English and Hindi. She has won several international and national awards. She was listed in Forbes as one of the most popular 78 authors in 2014. And Neelam had recently launched her book, Rang Bhara Tofa, a short story collection. And Thanks. as I know Neelam personally, she also writes in Urdu and very and her Urdu is almost perfect. Thank you, Neelam. Thank you, Thank you so much Welcome. for the last line. <laughs> uh, because no, no. I'm not, never so sure about that. But no, no, you, you are. Now you have started writing. It, you know, I mean, I have seen uh, that progress in you in Urdu. Thank you. Thank you. Then, uh, our next writer and poet is Praveen Ramtike. Very really good evening to everybody. Good evening, sir. How I'm, are you? I am good. Hi, Vaida. Hi, Neelam. Hi, Praveen. Hi, 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 Praveen. Yeah. And congratulations on the the release of the new book. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, Praveen Ramtike is an established writer and a poet from New Delhi. His poems have been published in many anthologies including Amravati, Poetic Prism, and Deccan Reveries. He is an engineer by education and training, now a researcher, trainer, and a communicator in the field of social development. Good evening and welcome. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Our next poet is Dr. Maitri Joshi. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, Hi Maitri. Vaida. Hi, Maida. Hi, Neelam. Hi. Hi, Pravinji. Hi. Welcome, Maitri. Hi. Hi. Dr. Maitri Joshi is an eye doctor, a psychologist, and an enthusiastic writer. She has two books of poems published by the names Shells and Melodies and Insight. Her first novel is Pinhole a bit clearer. Her short stories and poems have been published in a number of national and international magazines. She practices ophthalmology and psychology in a clinic and stays in Pune 
with her husband, Dr. Nishikan Joshi, and daughter Sakshi. Welcome, Mitri. Now, our next po poet is Shweta Khanna. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi hello. Shweta. How are you? Hi, hello, ji. Hello, Praveen ji. Hi. And hello, Mitri. Hi, hello. It's wonderful to be a part of this meet. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Shweta. You're most welcome, Shweta. Hello. hello. Thank you, ma'am. Born and brought up in the city of Nawab, Lucknow, Shweta presently resides in Bangalore. She had a poetic bent of mind from an early age. She writes stories, articles, and poems, both in English and Hindi, with poetry being her forte. She's a science teacher by profession, but a writer by passion. She has published a book, Being a Woman, for Muller, a compulsion a compilation of her poems and contribution to a few anthologies. Her hobbies include painting and craft work. Welcome, Shweta. Thank you for Our the warm next, welcome. Our next poet is Manisha Amol. Hello, good Hello. evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, Manisha. Good evening. Good evening, Manisha. Manisha is also a technical expert. Uh, she's a science graduate from Hindu College, Delhi University, pursued MBA marketing from IMT Ghazibad. She has worked with many corporations at various levels and won many accolades for her achievements, currently working as a director with a startup. She started her literary journey 20 months back with focus on English poetry and Hindi poetry, short stories and guzzles. Her poems have been published in a few national and international anthologies. She is actively associated with numerous online portals that promote English and Hindi literature. She is very active on online talk shows, live shows, poetry sessions, etc., and has been appreciated for her work. She has received numerous awards and awards participating in online poetry contests. Welcome, dear Manisha. Thank you, Vahida. And now I will introduce our sweet moderator who has done a great, fantastic job in inviting all of us and talking about us. So uh, Vahida Hussain is a blogger and a poet from Jabalpur. She is a senior school teacher by profession. She has a passion for writing, short stories, dreams of social justice and equality for women, and is playing an important role in bringing awareness on issues like domestic violence and female feticide. Her style of writing poetry is very simple, lucid. It just touches your heart. So welcome, Vahida. And over Thank to you, you Manisha. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, let us start with the first round of the poetry recitation. And I invite Neelam, please do us the honors. And she will be reciting the poem, Superwoman. Thank you, Aida. So here goes my poem. Superwoman. She cooks delicious food. She makes wonderful tea and carries out all her household tasks with glee. She also gets home a big fat pay. Let me introduce you to the superwoman of today. She wears a sari and covers her head. When elders are around, she puts on vermilion red. After a hard day's work, while taking them out, she's happy and gay. Oh, how adaptive is the superwoman of today. She's back into her trousers and jeans again. Driving her own car, keeping her home spick and span, leaving her children to school and picking them up every day. Oh, how versatile is the superwoman of today. In the office, she is always at the top, meeting targets and getting work done like a super cop. In promotions, 
she beats all those in the fray oh how intelligent is the superwoman of today the superwoman is amazing different and unique she doesn't tire out she doesn't fall sick like a machine she works night and day oh how energetic is the superwoman of today oh friends do not fall prey to this cult of superwoman such a superwoman doesn't exist it is just a whim like a machine uh, Oh friends, do not fall prey to this cult of superwoman. Such a superwoman doesn't exist. It is just a whim. In fact, she has emotions. She cries. She does fall sick. Superwoman is also a human being. You cannot be a master of all. Balance your life. Listen to your heart's call. Set your priorities. Be happy and live life like a queen. You will be the happiest of all human beings. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Awesome, ma'am. Awesome. <laughs> Very nice, beautiful. Very nice. I would just Thank like you. to share a comment by Nivedita. She's saying, "Superwoman is you, Neelam Saxena." Yes, <laughs> no doubt. And, and, but uh, I hope true. you. But I hope you all read the. Uh, you all heard the last stanza correctly. You know, yes. we all tend to be a superwoman. We think we Woman. can do everything. Yeah. Everything. But, uh, but we really can't and we also have our uh, emotions limitations, so yes. we should uh, yeah we have our limitations too so we should accept ourselves with our limitations so once we accept ourselves everybody else will accept us thank you yes totally no and we can all relate to your poem no doubt about it now yes. i call upon pravin ji to read out his poem on nature i suppose yeah it's a major in fact introducing me vaida told me uh, said that i am an established poet and i'm sorry i'm not um, <laughs> i'm 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 sort of quite an anti establishment poem you can poet you can call it if you want to say that uh, this poem in fact was originally rendered in english when i first wrote this poem and uh, i have read out this poem in hindi earlier so i thought given the Uh, the occasion let me start with something light uh, this again the story goes it was written in meghalaya cherapunji uh, and here's how the poem goes uh, just close your eyes uh, and listen to the poem beautiful place drizzling all through beautiful place drizzling all through come without an agenda or expectation beautiful place drizzling all through come without an agenda or expectation you'll return happy no pictures only memories of being in the clouds with thought of orchids and ferns listening to the streams and water falls shooting and thunders stopping at places nobody cares to pause stopping at places nobody cares to pause escaping away from spots to rest the normally people go escaping away from the place skipping the meals skipping the meals doing with munches pegged eggs strange lava pouring dried caves strange lava pouring wide squeezing through the crevices unhurt clothes drenched soil and dirt that was my experience of meghare wonderful beautiful beautifully rendered beautiful thank you sir. beautifully rendered yes, thank you so very much in your description yeah very nice very nice now i request dr mefri joshi to render her creative composition maddening monsoon this is a poem uh, about the bad aspect of monsoon so here it goes the maddening monsoon the claustrophobic sultriness lasting for days 
the unrelenting clouds which imprison the sun unyielding no rain just sweat ire yet a patient wait finally the rain arrives in drizzles then torrents the wait is over the earth cools the green steadily creeps over the naked brown cheer spreads and the crunch of the onion pakoras fills the air vehicles zoom taking the roads through the rain the streams cascade and percolate the skin to drench the soul it greedily drinks and the thirst is quenched then the drizzle leads to a spat of torrents days after days weeks after weeks monsoon months pass and become a deluge inundated parking lots the low lying terrain the wet sandals the dripping umbrellas the wet floor in the house the broken trees on the roads the overflowing rivers the dams full to the brim the stranded traffic the choked highways the drowning omkareshwar the water rising high in the mutha flowing over the bridges heaps of trash on the banks and all over the roads and the heart swamped with guilt the sight of the homeless the cart pullers the roadside shops the vegetable vendors the coconut seller who stays home sans work the flood affected villages people leaving their homes running to safe places the tv blaring the news of the floods head splitting unbearable and the restlessness of sitting on the living room sofas when the plushness pricks the bottoms as if the comfort is undeserved thank you wow thank you very wow. nice very nice awesome awesome thank you wonderful now i invite shweta khanna to recite a poem so the title of my poem is granny please forgive me and uh, this poem depicts the remorse of a girl who never valued her grandmother mm-hmm. so the wordings are my mother was in the labor pain you stood there comforting and consoling her a fragile old woman sat in the hospital for the entire day she was waiting for her daughter to give birth you took your granddaughter in your arms and planted a kiss of blessing on her tiny head you had no worldly means to express your joy but an age line marked smile on your face it spread time moved and i gradually grew but i never gave you your due respect you were an old miserable lady in my eyes with no due worth and effect you had led a poor and dependent life after your husband's sad demise and then one day you passed away though still your plight i did not realize years went by life moved on it was the occasion of my wedding that day had finally met the man of my dreams the entire scenario was joyous and gay my mother entered the room with soul in red eyes and hand me a pair of anklets with silver shine she placed my wedding gift from you on my palms it was a pair of small beauties with an antique design that was the gift my mother had treasured for years the blessings of an aged fragile woman who was no more she despite of no means left me her only jewelry an inimitable symbol of love and affection they bore the woman i had never cared for had still left me her wishes and affection in those 
lovely pair of anklets, I could see her fragile and old reflection. Today, I'm grown up and realize the behavior on my part was not fair. The love and relations are beyond material. The things that matter are the feelings and care. I know I got this wisdom quite late in my life. When you are there, no more with me. All I could say today is just, Granny, please forgive me. And with those silver memorabilia, you have passed your never-ending love to me. You have passed your never-ending love to me. Thank you. Beautiful. 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 Very nice. Well rendered also. Beautifully rendered. Touched Thank an you. emotional chord. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, sir. Yes, Very amazing. Nice. Amazing. Beautiful. Nice. And we really Thank take you. relations for granted. And we should yes, not. Sir. Yes. Well, well expressed. Very nice. Yeah, now, I request yeah. our admin. Yes. I request Thank our you, admin you. and technical expert, Manisha, uh, to recite her poetry, Pardon. Thank you, Vahida. And the poetry is Pardon, <clears throat> as Vahida already said it. Uh, normally, just a brief background. Women, despite having all the shortcomings, all the misgivings of her partner, as well as the society, she still has the heart, the courage to pardon. So that's the thought behind it. And now I'll be sharing my poem. I beg your pardon. Mantra on my lips. Vanity crushed to ashes. Self-respect vehemently trodden beneath your falsehood. My heart bleeds. Prejudices brimming to the core. Constant dissonance in togetherness. Broken promises unsettling my emotions. Belittling my presence shaming my existence, lost all scope for any forbearance, societal norms throttling my breath, sleepless nights drowning all dreams, superficial apologies do not undo the wrong, perpetual mistakes that cannot be forgiven, fear of ostracization does not bother, no more divinity in thoughts and actions, to unchain subjugated traditional patriarchal ways, the irrational behavior completely intolerable. And the last paragraph, just pay a bit more attention to this. Pardon, a virtue hence granted to you despite all. Unwilling to shoulder the unnecessary baggage. Hurtful thoughts forsaken out of your clutches. A free bird, new wings, new flights. A free bird, new wings, new flights. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful, lovely. Manisha. Lovely. Beautiful. Lovely. 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 So positive. Thank so you. Positive. Thank you. So and positive. And now I would like to... Yeah. And uh, now I would like to invite Vahida, our sweet moderator, to... Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Manisha. Uh, my poetry is in the form of a narration. It is a narrative poetry, uh, <laughs> compartment on transgender. May I? Yeah, yes. Please. Uh, who? They're just waiting. They're just waiting for it. Yes. <laughs> who art thou? I asked her in a moving train. She sitting in front of me in my compartment. Horrified for a moment. Shocked and irritated by my boldness, her eyes blazing fire, obliged. Why do you want to know me? My mother, though I am her flesh and blood, shuns me. My father, who sees I am born, humiliates me. I am a burden, a shame, a leper. My anatomy, a source of ridicule and laughter. Many names do I have, yet not a single belongs to me. My blessings you do seek when an heir is born. 
but when i stand with you your gaze kills me your silence becomes louder your gesture tells it all am i not part of your pompous society am i a pariah a castaway return my integrity and accept me her eyes now softened and a tear rolled down her cheeks i ashamed of myself gave her a tight hug and the compartment echoed with thunderous applause she stepped down on the next station her head held high and restored dignity thank you very uh, sensitive topic you've taken up and i love what you've written yes. yeah, yeah, very, thank very, you thank you so much yeah. very well done you know, yeah you know there are two things which are coming up in the comments first is where is pravin ji's hair yes. and one answer yes. was yes. that he has a natural hair <laughs> <laughs> yes yes Thank yes so yeah uh, in fact i wanted to take a few comments like uh, mm. nivedita yes, saying a uh, wahida amazing subject to speak on proud of you thank you thank you, Sarika, thank you uh, anil kumar is wishing good evening number of comments have been coming and you must have seen i'm highlighting those a topic rarely touched sadbir ma'am saying a little hug wahida ji for you on your lovely uh, poetry you. rendition so rekha sahu ji had asked praveen ji has a natural hat in fact natural hat <laughs> so yes. uh, i mean there are too many comments and all of us we will uh, i mean revert with replies to that later so moving on to the second round wahida over to you now yes so in this round uh, the poets after rendering their poem will be asked a question related to their work and life uh, first i call upon neelam to recite her poem thank you aida uh, medusa yeah medusa the title of the poem is medusa in fact uh, its title is be a medusa so okay be a before, medusa yeah so before i begin my poem i would like to tell in very short about medusa Medusa in Greek mythology is the most famous of monster figures known as gorgons. She was usually usually represented as a winged female creature having a head of hair consisting of snakes. Medusa was the only gorgon who was mortal, hence her slayer Perseus was able to kill her by cutting off her head. Now, uh, let me present before you my poem Be a Medusa. they thought that medusa should be killed they thought that medusa should be killed the tale tale spread that anyone who looked at her would turn into a stone they desired that she may be buried so deep under the earth that no one should even see her skeleton after all seeing her head could still turn them into a stone named as a monster reptiles are shown slithering on her body the mothers of are often heard whispering to their daughters don't become a medusa however the need of time demands that all daughters should turn into medusas however the need of time demands that all daughters should turn into medusas the reptiles would keep the amorous beings at bay and those who stare at these medusas with lusty eyes should indeed be turned into stones after all didn't stereop use medusa's head as a protection for the town of tegia against attack so that was my poem be a medusa very beautiful nice. and well expressed very metaphorical yes. and uh, really beautiful. they should all be turned into stone Mm-hmm. and uh, now i would like you i would uh, uh, ask you a question uh neelam yeah yeah you are audible you are audible 
yes yeah, i'm audible one yes. one minute and one minute too. sir yeah. <laughs> yes one minute <laughs> In fact, let me take some comments from Sadbi. Sadbi, yeah. Okay. Well, let me let yes, me please. let me adjust my mobile. Yes, yes, please. please. Yeah, yeah. Anjali, thank you, Sadbi uh, ji. Thank you, Sadbi ji. Thank you, Anjali ji. Anjali ji is saying wonderful. Yes. Anjali ji is thank again you. saying amazing. She has been constantly giving comments and just loving our session. So thank you, Anjali ji, for your encouragement. And now over to you, Vaida. Yes, Neelam, how long does it take for you to write a novel? You know, it all I... depends upon the theme on which I am writing and upon the time that I have in my hand. For example, when I wrote uh, my novel, Can I Have This Chance, which was my second mm -hmm. novel. I was on a leave, so that left me with a lot of writing time, and I finished that novel in two months. However, there are certain other other novels uh, I took uh, more than a year for completing it because uh, I wouldn't get time. And writing for writing a novel, you know, you have to think continuously about it. You have to yes. be in sync with all the characters, and you have to remember the earlier plot. Uh, um, there is a writer who used to read every chapter before beginning the other chapter. So I am also one yes, of them. Yes, you have to. <laughs> so it yes, takes you time. Need to, time. Yes, you need but, to connect after, uh, like if you take a break for a long time, you need to connect with your own novel. That is important. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. I invite Praveen to recite his poem. Uh, it's on death, I suppose. Something to do with death. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Everybody talks about life. Yes. Life but, to death is quite normal. It's logical. Yeah, it's, it's a stark reality. Nobody wants yeah, yeah, no, to talk wants. about. Knows, yeah, yeah. But death to life is quite interesting. Like what Shweta just now narrated, she found her grandmother in death, not in life. That is quite, uh, quite uh, interesting. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, and uh, it has become so common, we see around, so that people have stopped talking about, it. people have stopped feeling that death means something to someone. It can mean a lot to someone, rather more than maybe a birth, because you lose something, birth gains something. So the, the sense of loss, <clears throat> I try to uh, put in my few words, and this is quite spontaneous. Uh, I normally reflect on what's happening around, what I see, and when I write these kinds of things, people are not very happy with me. So, but I, I, I can't stop writing. I can't. I can't stop if I don't write that that particular emotion. Then I'm very uneasy. I'm not. Uh, I, I can't. Uh, sometimes I can't sleep. So this was something which I wrote in uh, 2017. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is how the poem goes. <clears throat> Death of a farmer on the field. Death of a farmer on a field. Death of an artist indeed. Death of a martyr on the tomb. Death of a child in the womb. Death of a language and culture. Death of a language and culture. Death of birds and vulture. Death of a soldier on the front. Death of a bride who was burnt. Death of a worker on a machine. Death of a worker on the machine. Death of a valley that has lost its sheen. Death of a flower that you grace. Death of a flower that you grace. Death of a river that has lost its trace. Wonderful. Such a poignant poem. Uh, yes, 
And we were so lost in your poem that we couldn't uh, speak. Also, yes, <laughs> wonderfully, mm. wonderfully put. And uh, now to the question: You have uh, recently trained a team of railway child line members on child trafficking. Uh, please enlighten us in brief about it. Thank you so much, Vaidya. You noticed that post that I had put on our Gupta group. Yes. And uh, remembering that we should, it, it's important. <clears throat> uh, in fact, that's my uh, profession as a trainer. Uh, I have trained uh, the Child Line Foundation. You must have heard about Child Line Foundation, I, I suppose. Most of us. 10, 9, 8. Does anybody know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yes. helpline number. Uh, La number. Yes. Yeah, if you don't know, please do remember. More than what I am saying, do remember this number. This is very, very important. This is the uh, single point contact for any child who is in crisis, who needs care, who needs protection. So as part of my profession, I had trained uh, childline staff across India. And now I'm actually mentoring their second level teams who are on the ground, who are implementing partners. These children, uh, th this, uh, the people who I'm working with, they are at the railway station keeping watch on children who are there's a likelihood they are being trafficked or they need care and it's quite a tough job it's very very tough job because when these children share their experiences first thing is getting the experience is quite difficult but when they actually share the experiences it's quite traumatic it can be very very true because you Right. You start remembering certain things which you have seen, but you just missed it. You just ignored it. Mm. So what I would request through this, uh, since Vahida has uh, given me this platform, that any time you see any such child who needs care and protection, please do call that number. It's toll free. Uh, you'll immediately be directed to the person who is in your region, maybe within your district, who within a very short span can reach the child. Your identity can remain anonymous. You don't have to reveal if you wish to, but it's good to know. So I would request, uh, please do. Uh, yes, we should information. all do. So, yeah. And uh, do feel about the people because it's very easy to say that ah. this is how it is. And uh, what Vahida had very nicely shared, children are extreme, particularly post-pandemic, or I mean, we are still in the pandemic. I'm not saying mm. it's ended. The incidences of such abuses, which may, many people don't even think it's an abuse. Thanks, the first thing is you, you realize yeah. it's an abuse. You need you need to take action. I think it has reportedly has gone up. Also various things. So thank you so much for uh, giving this opportunity. For me hey, to thank share. you to you for enlightening us and for giving us this information. Yeah. So and now I request. To, so please do remember. Yes, ten nine eight. Yeah, ten nine. Eight. Ten nine eight. Yes, yeah, it's in reverse. We will all remember. <clears throat> yes. Now I request Dr. Mitri Joshi to read out her poem, Ping Pong. Mitri, please unmute yourself, Mitri. Dr. Mitri Joshi. Can, can you hear? Yeah. Can you can. all hear me? Yes. 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 yes you are audible. Yes. Yes. yes you are audible. Yes. Okay. Shall I start my to recite my poem? Yes. 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 yes you may. You may. Please. Okay. This is a poem uh, about uh, the name of the poem is the ping pong ball, a compulsive obsessor's guide. I too have been like my little daughter, repeating ball, ball, ball. I'm audible. Okay. okay. I'll start once again, I guess. The name of the poem is Ping Pong Ball, a compulsive obsessor's guide. I too have been like my little daughter, repeating ball, 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 a numerous times and in different ways. When she saw that little and cute and multicolored set of ping pong balls dancing in an expensive toy shop, but which, being a new mom on a tight budget, I could not afford. 
after some days of saving i brought her the ball i too have repeated the names of my compulsions off and on obsessed about having them wishing to fill my eyes with the enchanting hues and colors throwing them and letting them ping pong and yet being able to have them back at my command i too have been repeated the names of my compulsions off and on obsessed about having them wishing to fill my eyes with their enchanting hues and colors throwing them and letting them ping pong and yet being able to have them back at my command but but over the years i have known the world is full of ping pong balls not only multicolored but of various shapes and forms beckoning me i have to walk through a life unfaltered and to let the ping pong balls ping pong all the while long those ping pong balls have often transformed into cares and worries and unfair comments and judgments too and banged relentlessly on my door but since some time i have stopped taking their calls but over the years i have known the world is full of ping pong balls not only multicolored but of various shapes and forms beckoning me i have also learned to walk through life unfaltered and to let the ping pong balls ping pong all the while long those ping pong balls have often transformed into cares and worries and unfair comments and judgments too and bang relentlessly on my door but since some time i have stopped taking their calls thank you wonderful wonderful very nice very nice ma'am very nice so this interesting comment of alka ji all of us are looking pretty pravin ji where is your topi so you need to answer them <laughs> just on the lighter side so yes life is a ping pong the big ma'am is yes, saying this yes yes yeah yes quite a nice reflection uh, yes. <laughs> yes 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 ping pong nice. and very nice mm. wonderful wonderful now uh, coming to the question being a doctor how do you manage your time amitri and when do you write your poems actually uh, most most of my poems have been written uh, not more than taking 15 minutes i have not uh, put time into sitting and writing like formally so most of the times they are written mostly in 15 minutes that means you are very spontaneous to prove yes there is a thing that you have to yeah you have to just put in time or word limit so for me for prose every day 500 words or half an hour so i completed pinhol in the same way i was writing it for a long time but then i could finish it like that very good very nice in one good. flow very good good one very nice and uh, yes thank you yes now it's shweta it's a turn to render her poem yes, please do the honor uh, yes ma'am uh, thank you ma'am uh, as uh, pravin sir spoke about death uh, my poem is somewhat related to it and the poem depicts the agony and the plight of a woman who could never express herself and faced just humiliation throughout her life uh, the title of my poem is i could not i should not so the poem goes first born in the family i was cursed daily often smacked despite any error i lived under a shadow of terror no education for me or good food entire day just heavy work load i was a burden uncalled i could not speak i should not speak because i am a girl child still young to understand meaning of marriage for me was bland i was set to enter a new cage with marriage to a man of my father's age i was insulted beyond boundary 
for not bringing enough dowry the whole day i just cried i could not speak i should not speak because i am a bride i was raped and tortured night after night there was no one to listen to my plight drinking and beating were a daily affair to ask for anything i could not dare emotionally and physically i was wrecked for his little kindness i knelt and begged still i tried my best to survive i could not speak i should not speak because i am a wife be pregnant not be some joy i gave birth to a baby boy sweet lullabies for him i would sing in hope of a smile that he would bring like father like son as he grew my expectations were shunned for me he also did not bother i could not speak i should not speak because i am a mother the whole life spent went in vain when i look back it brings immense pain i could never gather the courage to rebel despite of my life being a hell i live for everyone except me but at last today i am set free i lie silently on the floor i could not speak i should not speak because today i am no more because today i am no thank you very powerful poem shweta very touching very touching very touching very touching and very powerful thank you and beautifully yes. all the phases the way she has written is amazing very nice amazing mm. very thank nice. you sir thank you so much Ashwita, where do you get your ideas from? <laughs> Ma'am, uh, I take my inspiration from the happenings and people around me. Um, the seed of the idea of my writing, uh, be it a poem, a story, or an article, um, comes from the real people. Um, and on the basis of the true incidences, I uh, use my imagination to uh, grow the plant of my writings. That's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now moving to our uh, Edmund Manisha, she'll be reciting a poem depicting romance, a bouquet of love, and Thank her you, broad Vida. smile. Uh, there's a Thank broad you, smile Vida. on her face. Huh? <laughs> Thank you yes, so much Manisha. for the compliment. And uh, the first poem was "Pardon," which was on a slightly serious note. Now this is a no, romantic no. poem. Yeah, a bouquet of love. our eyes met we fell in love emotions soared high like a flight of dove my heart of gold hidden in a curve bright with luminescence came floating above we grew older love grew deeper still fresh as fragrance of a fresh rose flower embedded deep in our senses became even stronger life's ups and downs hand in hand we walked together the journey was to my heart's desire and rich with fulfillment that i would aspire tough at times seemed so hard to retire knee deep in anguish feet stuck in a mire your presence in my life changed the perspective a sea change in attitude that was so restrictive never say never come what may irrespective heart mind and soul all became so restive would sincerely wish to live my next life with you do signal your existence or give me a clue to paint a new canvas with a colorful hue and celebrate every morning dancing in the dew and the last paragraph is 
slightly poignant, I would say, lying alone in the grave, mind and body so still. Feel the warmth of your being there. My heart is filled. Oh, my beloved life partner, a cure-all pill. Accept a bouquet of love, my last will. Accept a bouquet of love, my last will. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful, beautiful very romantic, very nice. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And the last one is I now, so Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I look at a broad smile, you know. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. That, that is the USP of Manisha. Yes, yes. No doubt. I agree. Thank and you. Uh, she brings the whole environment, you know, lively. You know, it's it's her, really. God bless you, Manisha. Thank you, Vaida, uh, for your kind words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what prompted you to start writing as your background is non-literary, Manisha? Yeah, actually, uh, literary people uh, actually attracted me a lot because I used to feel that, you know, they are very knowledgeable and uh, they uh, look at life in different perspectives. So all that used to give me a kick, but I was very busy in my work and, you know, didn't get much time. But I used to love participating in contests, slogan writing. And I have won, you know, at times I've won a mixie, a gold bangle and things like that. So that kept me motivating. Uh, wow. you know to keep writing yeah and now i have a little more time to myself so i'm able to pursue this passion so I, about two years back then i got into i can say not full-fledged but yes uh, i'm doing it a uh, little more methodically now so that is how it started thank, thank you so much manisha thank you and continues to win awards every time Yes, yes, I love to, you know, and especially in poetry, if I, you know, no, want, uh, win a certificate or an, uh, you know, an award, it, it really motivates me. And now I would like to, yeah, and now I would like to uh, invite, again, my sweet friend, I would say, because she is really looking so sweet uh, today. Amanda, uh, Thank to, you so much. Uh, yes. her poem. And I, uh, before that, some comments, but I think now we are a little short of time. We don't so we take time. The comments later. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Vahida, you so, please uh, render your poetry. Okay. Um, this is a different uh, genre and style, not my style of writing, but inspired by you all. I've written a poem on spring, a short poem. Fluttering of wings and chirping past rhyme. Fluttering of wings and chirping past rhyme, squeaking squirrels and nightingale fine. Spin and whirl in the warmth and sunshine. Fragrant blossoms and fresh blade, renew and rejuvenate. Crispy winter is now behind. Let us hope and rejoice. Let us forget desolation and despair. Let us dance in Spain. Let us dance and sing. Nothing is adorable as spring. Thank you. A short poem. But very nice one. Yes. Really lovely. Short and sweet. Yes. Uh, a very mm -hmm. different genre, not my style of writing, but still no, but inspired true, by you all. <laughs> and Vaida, the question is who is your favorite writer? And any reason for choosing that favorite writer? Yes. Uh, my favorite uh, writer or author is Khalil Gibran. I'm a huge okay. fan of Khalil oh, Gibran. Wow. Uh, yes. He's so a lab, uh, we all, oh, yes. Yes. Uh, and um, his works yes, deal with spiritual love, joy, oh, and oh, sorrow, okay. marriage, children, and death. Like, he covers everything. Like the whole philosophy of life and even death. And I am a great admirer yes, of his right. work. Yes. Now, I couldn't. Yes. I think there is some echo coming. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's time to end our session. Any last yes. words from any of I, I yes. would like to I would like to make an announcement, uh, Manisha, maybe for you. 
uh, there's a contest going on on my page and it is pinned on the top of my page <laughs> so you all can just go through it Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And before all of us should go for it. Yes. Yeah. Before we end the session, a big thank you to Prasoon ji who makes lovely posters every time. Posters. And yes, yes. Yeah. And you know, makes us look so you know different than normally what we are. He chooses the right pictures and puts us in the right place. Yes. And a big thank you, yeah. And a big thank you to Neelam Sena Yeah. Announcement. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, just one minute, Pravinji. And a big thank you to Neelam Saxena for giving us this opportunity on this page, yes. wherein uh, I think almost every week we are you know coming in front of the viewers almost two, three times a week. So a big thank you. And to all our fellow participants. And over to Praveen Ji now, you were uh, saying something. It is both pleasure and honor to be here. Uh, next Saturday is a unique day. Uh, it's in the location of the International Women's Day. All men poets will be reciting their poems. Yes. Right. So I, yes, I invite yes. all, all uh, everybody to yeah. come participate. So in fact, that is a, the, in fact, that is a very unique thing that is going to take place on my page because normally women speak about women's rights. So let's yes. uh, all uh, hear what men have to say men on this topic. To yes. yes, yes. So we are so, putting all our efforts. We hope to succeed. Uh, definitely. Yes. Definitely. definitely. You will. You will. Yeah. All the very interested. And Vaira ji. Uh, now you please yes. firmly close the session. Ah, yeah. Yes. Now it's time to end our live session. It's been pleasure and joy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Neelam, for providing us with, with this wonderful platform. Thank you, audience, for being here today, listening to us and encouraging us. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good, Good night, night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. I, and it was real pleasure, no doubt about it. We all enjoyed.